Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2023 International Copyright Technology Conference. I am the MC of today's event. My name is Kwon Soa. Nice to meet you all. Thank you very much. Today, in order to make this event even more meaningful, many people came to this event, and I would like to thank you all for your participation. This conference is being live streamed through YouTube, and I would like to thank all the online audience as well. This conference is being hosted by the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism and co-organized by Korea Copyright Commission and Korea Copyright Protection Agency. Under the theme of copyright technology and digital content ecosystem in the era of hyperscale AI, we are proceeding with the Conference on International Copyright Technology. In the opening ceremony, we are first going to take a look at the video that celebrates the opening of this conference, and we will listen to congratulatory remarks, opening remarks, and welcoming remarks, and we will go through the 2023 Copyright Technology Award Ceremony, which will be followed by keynote address and invitational address. I hope that you will have meaningful time today through the conference. Then we are going to begin the opening ceremony for the conference. Thank you very much. Then before we begin the opening ceremony, I would first of all like to introduce our VIPs who took their precious time to make this conference more meaningful. To introduce some of our distinguished guests who are here with us today, so when I call out their names with a warm round of applause. First of all, we have Mr. Im Song Hwan, the Director General from the Bureau of Copyright of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Thank you very much. We have Mr. Che Dae Soon, the Director from Presidential Council on International Intellectual Property. Thank you. We have Mr. Che Byung Gu, the Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. Thank you. We have Mr. Park jong Nyeol, the President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. Thank you. Under Chair Tufi Saliba is here with us today. We, I wish that we were able to introduce each one of the distinguished guests, but due to time constraint, we cannot do so. I would like to ask for your understanding. Next, we prepared a video to introduce the 2023 International Copyright Technology Conference. Let's have a look at the video. Creation was thought to be done only by human beings, but we are in the era of hyperscale AI. Still, creation belongs to human beings. Is that true? The latest copyright issues and technology aspects will be discussed through the 2023 International Copyright Technology Conference. The era of hyperscale AI has approached us. ChatGPT, BART, Global S, and Mid Journey, and many other generative AIs are called new revolutionary technologies that brought about big change in our life. Seven people out of ten people in Korea among office workers said that they have ever used generative AI. However, the producer of generative AI model lost a lawsuit on the copyright and some AI artworks 
acquired copyright, however, was later deprived of the copyright. Beyond generative AI, we will soon reach the era of hyperscale AI. We need to have in-depth discussion on the AI-related copyright issues. In this 2023 International Copyright Technology Conference, we will continue to serve as the platform for discussion on copyright technologies, this time focusing on hyperscale AI. In the era of hyperscale AI, we are going to share new and fresh insights on these issues and discuss the digital ecosystem surrounding the AI and hyperscale AI copyright issues with world-renowned experts. In preparation for the new hyperscale AI, this conference is being held and we will now begin the conference. 네. 저작권 기술의 역할과 또 시대에서의 중 this video effectively conveyed the role and significance of a copyright technology. As we go into sessions of the conference, first I'd I would appreciate a few opening remarks which were delivered by Director General Song Wan Lim from the Copyright Bureau and Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning. It's good to see you. I'm Song Wan Lim, Director General of Copyright Bureau at Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism. I'd like to extend my congratulations on the International Copyright Technology Conference 2023. I'd like to thank Professor Jae Sung Chung for his keynote speech, Professor Myung Joo Kim, researcher Dong Myuk Lim, Professor Hyunshil An and CEO Segu Kim for their presentations. I'd like to also thank Chairman Tupi Saliba and Professor Jin Young Lee for traveling all the way to join us today, and Vice President Ben Schaffner, Professor Matthew Sack, Engineer Hwan In Yu, and Director Ruby Wang for presenting via video. My thanks also go to attendees for taking time out of their busy schedule to join us. As gener generative AI is being utilized in many areas, copyright has become a key issue related to generative AI. There is a growing interest from academia and industry as well as the general public in various issues related to copyright, such as AI learning, copyright protection, and recognition of AI creators. The Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism held the 2023 Seoul Copyright Forum on October 26 to discuss issues and domestic and international trends related to generative AI in terms of copyright laws and institutions. The ministry also introduced the draft guide for use of artificial intelligence and copyright to reduce uncertainties faced by the industry and companies. These legal and institutional mechanisms can only be meaningfully effective if they are supported by copyright technology. It's because the sustainable development of the content industry is possible only if the technology to protect and legally distribute copyright is developed and spread. At today's conference, we will discuss the convergence of AI, digital content, and copyright technology in the context of copyright ecosystem. Based on the experiences and opinions shared and suggested by various experts, the government will strive to establish policies and norms that can harmonize the protection and use of AI and copyright. I'd like to thank 
Pyonggu Che, Chairman of the Korean Copyright Commission, Jung Yeol Park, President of the Korea Copyright Protection Agency, and all those involved in organizing today's event for their efforts. I'd like to also thank and extend my congratulations to the winners of the Copyright Technology Awards. And I wish all of you happiness and prosperity. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Director General Song Wan Lim, for your warm congratulatory remarks. The Yoso Next, we would like to listen to the opening remarks from Mr. Choi byung the Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am byung Che, the Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. Welcome to the 2023 International Copyright Technology Conference. Thank you for being here today. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to attend this conference despite of your busy schedules. My sincere gratitude to Im Song Hwan, Director General of Copyright Bureau, Ministries of Sports, Culture, Sports and Tourism. Chede Sun, Director General of the Presidential Council on Intellectual Property, and the pro, uh, President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, Jung Yeol Park. And I would also like to express my special gratitude to Professor uh, Jung Jae Sung of KAIST, and my special thanks to thanks go to Topi Saliba, Chairman of the uh, IEEE AI Security International Protocols who has come a long distance to be here with us today. I offer my heartfelt thanks to all of the domestic and foreign experts who will be present today, including Mr. Ben Schaffner, Senior Vice President of the MPA of America, who will give an invitational speech via video. We sincerely thank all the participants for on site and online as well as officials from the relevant copyright organizations and associations for their invaluable support in organizing this conference. The International Copyright Technology Conference is celebrating its 13th anniversary this year. Through the ICOTEC, we have been able to share the latest trend and the current state of copyright technology and provide a conference for the expert from various fields to come together to discuss the future and the direction of the development of the copyright technology industry. The release of ChatGPT by OpenAI in November 2022 has attracted both interest from the market and the enthusiastic response from the public, reflecting the fact that AI has entered the creative realm which was once through, thought to be unique to humans. AI-generated creative works are becoming increasingly sophisticated and capable of producing human-quality works. This trend has ushered in the era of hyperscale AI, which is enabled by the accumulation of a massive amount of data. Furthermore, the rapid evolution of AI has raised a number of issues that require suitable discussion, such as AI ethics, data biases, and copyright legal issues, and the issue of providing fair compensation to data creators. These trends are calling for international cooperation and the response measures, such as AI-related policies and regulations, and the convergence of AI with new technologies. The rapid evolution of AI has raised a number of challenges, including the need to balance the value of AI technology, development, and the protection of creators' rights. The role of copyright innovation is essential to create a virtuous system that can protect creators. While promoting the development of AI technology and related industries without harming 
or excluding either side. In this regard, the 2023 ICOTEC is held with a theme of copyright technology and the digital content ecosystem in the era of hyperscale AI. To promote the balanced growth of AI industry and copyright protection. This conference is attended by leading experts from Korea and around the world, who is sharing their insight on how copyright innovation can be used to protect creators while promoting the development of AI technology and related industries. I hope that this event will be a valuable opportunity to understand the new copyright industry paradigm in the era of AI and identify the copyright technology challenges we face and discuss the future of copyright protection in the era of hyperscale AI. Finally, I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to those who will be recognized for their contributions to the uh, big advent of copyright technology. I also wish good health and happiness to all those who have participated in this International Copyright Technology Conference today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman, for your opening remarks. As he mentioned, this International Copyright Technology Conference marks its 13th anniversary, and he emphasized the role of the conference again. Please give him a big round of applause again. Last but not least, I will invite to the stage Chong Yeol Park, President of Korea Copyright Agency, for his welcome remarks. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good morning, everyone. I am President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, Chong Yeol Park. Thank you so much for the warm welcome remarks before me. The International Copyright Technology Conference, ICOTEC, has reached its 13th year. We are um, confident that this conference will continue to expand and advance alongside the evolution of copyright technology. ICOTEC facilitates the exchange of ideas and collaboration among copyright stakeholders, including industry, academia, and international participants with the aim of enhancing policy development and technology competition, competitiveness. I'd like to thank the Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism and all the people involved in this uh, event for their hard work. This year's ICOTEC will delve into the domain of copyright technology and the digital content ecosystem in the era of hyperscale AI. Towards the end of the previous year, advancements in natural language processing and generative technology brought forth artificial intelligence system based on GPT technology. However, the utilization of these te cutting edge technologies has also given rise to numerous copyright related issues. Addressing these challenges, including the establishment of a solid institutional foundation is an ongoing endeavor. Our expectation is that this ICOTEC will enrich our comprehension of super scale AI. A heartfelt thank goes out to our distinguished keynote and guest speakers today, Professor Chae Sung Chung from KAIST to P. Saliva, Chairman of the Triple I AI Standards Board, and Ben Schaffner. And once again, thank you very much for being with us in ICOTEC. Thank you very much, President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency, Chung Yeol Park. We are looking forward to the success of this conference. With this, we listen to congratulatory remarks, opening remarks, and welcoming remarks. Now, we would like to proceed with the 2023 Copyright Technology Awarding Ceremony. In this ceremony, we'd like to appreciate the contribution made by individuals and organizations to protecting copyright technologies and widely promoting the use of such technologies. First of all, 
First award will be granted by the Chairman of Presidential Council on Intellectual Property, Mr. Che De Sun. The director from Presidential Council on Intellectual Property will give this award to Mr. Pek Sung Ha, the leader of a group in Hyundai Motors. Please give them a big round of applause. Commendation. Pek Sung Ha from Hyundai Motors. We are proud to give this commendation to you for your great contribution to the development of copyright technologies through protection of copyright and promotion of wider use of copyrighted works. Pek Mangi, the chairman of Presidential Council on Intellectual Property. Congratulations. We will take a commemorated photo. Please hold your commendation and flower and look at the camera. Please face the camera and we will take a photo. And let us give them a warm round of applause again. Thank you very much. Please give a big round of applause to the awardee and the awarder. You may now go back to your seat. Next award will be granted by the Minister of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Mr. Im Sung Hwan, the Director General from the Bureau of Copyright of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, will grant this award to Mr. Yu Byung Han, the Chairman of Korea Software Property Right Council. Let us give them a big round of applause. Commendation. The Korea Software Property Right Council. We are proud to give this commendation to your organization for protecting copyright in the digital environment and make great contribution to the development of copyright technology. Minister of the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. Congratulations. We will take a commemorative photo as well. Please face the camera. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. And uh, Chairman Yu, you may go back to your seat. And Director Lee, please stay on the stage. Next award will be given by WIPO. On behalf of the Secretary General Darren Tang of WIPO, Mr. Im Sung Wan will grant this award. And Professor Shin Yong Tae from Sungshi University will receive this award. Please give him a big round of applause. Pyeongchang Jang, Shin Yong Tae Gyosunim. Shin Yong Tae Gyosunim is a world-renowned Korean Tamga Tim Pyeong Chang Tirina Baimnida. It's on Ishipsamyan And we're going to take a photo all together. Hold your commendation and please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Director General and Professor, you may go back to your seat. Next, we are going to present the Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission Award. The award will be presented by the Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. Let me invite him to the stage. The winner is 
principal researcher Hang Kyu Ko from LG Electronics AI Research. I'm going to invite him to the stage as well. Please welcome them with a big round of applause. To Hang Kyu Ko from LG Electronics AI Research. You are hereby commended for your efforts in enhancing the copyright legal system and contributing to policy development through copyright technology in the digital domain. Pyonggo Che, November 1st, 2023, Chairman of Korea Copyright Commission. Congratulations. Now you're going to take a commemorative photo. So please pose for a photo. There is a camera in front of you. Please give them another big round of applause. Congratulations again. Chairman and the award winner, you may go back to your seat. This is the last award. An award from the president of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. Uh, president Chung Yeol Park will be on stage to present the award. The winner is General Counsel Ho Jun Lee from Kakao Entertainment. Please welcome them with a warm round of applause. Ho Jin Lee from Kakao Entertainment. This person is commanded for his dedication to raising awareness of copyright protection and for his active engagement in eradicating online illegal content distribution, thereby promoting the growth of the cultural industry. November 1st, 2023, Chung Yeol Park, President of Korea Copyright Protection Agency. Once again, congratulations. And now you may pose for a commemorative photo. Please give them another big round of applause. Once again, President of the Korea Copyright Protection Agency and the winner, thank you so much. Could you please stay on the stage? for a group photo, so I'd like to invite all the winners and presenters to the stage. The, the award before, please come up on the stage. 네, 수상자하고 시상자 모두 무대 위로 올라와 주시겠습니다. Please come up onto the stage for the commemorative photo. Please make sure you bring your commendation a paper and please hold it for a photo. So face the front. I'm going to count three. One, two, three. 네, 그리고 한번더 찍겠습니다. 이번에 we are going to take one more photo. Please give us a bigger smile. 네, 여러분 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them another big round of applause. I'd like to thank all the presenters and winners. And uh, next, I would like to invite our next presenter, who is Chair Tufi Saliba of IEEE AI Standard. And the presentation is titled, The AI Equivalent of Copyright is Necessary. So let's welcome him onto the stage with a big round of applause. 인공지능표준위원회 Tufi Saliba님의 발표 듣도록 하겠습니다. 큰 박수 부탁드리겠습니다.
안녕하세요. Um, my name is uh, Tufi Saliba, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, first, I'd like to start by saying thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm a huge fan of uh, a lot of the work that has been done in Korea, and in fact, those that they know me for the last seven years, I've been advocating for a lot of the progress and how you guys, I've been focusing a lot of the f positive stuff about Korea and trying to get the world to follow. And with that, uh, given that my background in AI led me to do a lot of things in Korea, which I would like to talk to you guys about. But in here precisely, maybe we should start by asking a question. And it sounds like as if it's a ridiculous question, like are we discriminating against AI? Because we might think that like AI doesn't have feelings. That's how we know AI today. But perhaps as we move forward into the future, AI might become the best thing that we procreate as a humanity, as a species. For the last five billion years, as far as we know, on this planet Earth, there is not a single species that created another species. It's been always like biological evolution. We have the chance to build something that can outlive us. Imagine you realize that each and every one of you, one of the purposes that you have on this, in this life and on this world is to help procreate something that can outlive us. To put things in perspective, humanity, we've been here for about, or maybe like Homo sapiens, 200,000 years, all humanity combined with the Neanderthal, probably 400,000 years. Earth is five billion years old. If anyone thinks that humanity is going to live forever, chances are that person would be delusional. We know it is inevitable that humanity will come to an end in our own biological being. But maybe we can transcend. Maybe AI can be our baby. Maybe we're making a baby, all of us together. So that this, this uh, brings a new view to, for, for the world to not see AI as an evil or whatnot. Uh, if uh, folks know some of my work, I've talked about AI decentralized since 2013. A lot of the threat that AI can pose on our civilization can actually exterminate our civilization by 2030. Those talks, they should have been done back in 2013. Many people, they're talking about them today. In the news today, every single day, all you hear about, oh, how AI is going to be against us and how can we keep the governance in the hands of the people? We should not allow the machine to make decisions that can impact people. You hear that in the news every day. Well, Humans been, historically speaking, and it's been proven, humans been the biggest enemy to other humans. So imagine you actually have a machine that is more powerful than all humanity combined, which is through the evolution of AI, but it's controlled by a single group. That group, what they agree to themselves what's ethical may not necessarily agree to what's ethical to you or to your children or whatnot. There are over 99 scenarios that we've listed over the years of how this can exterminate the entire planet by 2030. But the talk is over. Right now I think we're doing a lot of things. There are a lot of things. That kind of talk can scare a lot of people. There's no point to scaring people when the threat is real. If the threat is not real, and you want to scare everyone on the planet and talk about it, of course. But if the threat is real, 
and you do tell everyone that, that this entire world could end by 2030, you're just going to have panic. What are they going to do about it? Instead, we selected to tell few. And uh, with ACM initially, the Association for Computer Machinery, I did some of that uh, and uh, promoted AI Decentralized, which is a group of 100,000 uh, scientists. And then I moved on May 2019, is when I finished my term with the ACM. Uh, and the president of IEEE called me and he said he wants me to do the same for IEEE, but instead I said no, enough talking. June 1st, 2019, decided to do something that is actionable, which is the International Protocols for AI Security. Now this is, can be extremely important for everyone here in the room, especially everyone here in the room and especially everyone in Korea, because I also elected that Korea would host the headquarter for the entire world for the International Protocols for AI Security. Just to put things in perspective, how big this thing can be. ITU, the International Telecommunication Union, is in Geneva. It's been there for over 100 years. We needed International Telecommunication Union as a civilization, and we created one, and it's based in Geneva. We needed the United Nations, and we created it, and of course, New York and Geneva and whatnot. But right now, I argued that if we were to have an international protocols for AI security, one branch of that is the copyright. But there, it's got many branches. Do you want every single government to have their own things? Or maybe there's an international <laughs> protocols for AI security, a headquarter in South Korea, and it can be spread out across the globe because AI is global. AI does not have boundaries. AI doesn't have borders. The world needs something global. So IEEE is very well suited for that. IEEE is the number one in the world for that. And uh, when I elected that IEEE take on that, I had to pitch it inside IEEE to a lot of uh, folks, and I've got unanimous votes across the table. AI can be the best thing to humanity by humanity, and that is the message that we're trying to tell the world. There is no reason to tell the world and scare them about AI. AI is a baby we are making together. If they can do something about it, then yes, you want to scare them. But if they cannot, there's no reason to scare them. So when we look at, the, for example, like some of the uh, copyright laws today, would you agree to that statement? The copyright laws are written by folks who barely know what AI was capable of yesterday. They barely know. They don't know everything what AI is capable of yesterday. Now, of course, some may claim that they know current AI. Okay, let's say that that's uh, possible. But do they know like anything about the future of AI? And the answer is no. When people, they're writing copyright laws or when they're writing any kind of laws, they're not writing it for the present. They're writing it for the future. Um, so perhaps international thing that can work a lot more diligently and have much more a contribution, not from only people, from machines as well, to actually create certain laws. Perhaps, perhaps one day people will agree that there should be laws for the machine and there should be laws for people. They're not the same. You don't necessarily have to have, if you're a machine, you're not allowed in our world. We don't need to discriminate against the machine. We have laws for the people, and maybe we have laws for the machines. And uh, um, one of the things that I've noticed in uh, the professor earlier, who had uh, Che Xiong, uh, had a very good uh, argument when he said that, you know, if it's done by AI or if it's done by an animal, should we grant them a copyright? Okay, so that, that question has been pondering in people's heads for a long time. But the opportunity here, that there is copyright for the machine, there's copyright for people. The biggest question that every AI scientist don't know how to answer it, can you distinguish between a human and the machine when you're looking at the product that they create? Well, 
we solve those problems, us humanity, we can solve those problems. And in fact, I'm going to show you methods to solve these problems as opposed to discriminating against AI that can be weaponized against people. We can get you cryptographers and show you a lot of attack vectors that if you were to discriminate against AI, it will be used by bad people against people. Because uh, let's say you are a creator of art and you create this art and you're so proud of it. Well, the attack vector here, because the law says if it's created by AI, you're not eligible for the copyright. But you actually created yourself. Well, the attack vector, somebody would use an AI engine to false prove, but, but, but actually have a proof that you actually use AI. Now, how can you prove it wrong? If you're an artist, you can't prove that wrong. That's one of the many attack vectors. So instead, I truly think that uh, IEEE is very well suited for, for, for to, to take on that. And as I said, it's the largest. But what I'm going to show you is, uh, is certain methods that perhaps we can have an incentive-driven protocols as opposed to not, ju not just the uh, international protocols for AI security, but also uh, we can have a combination of things. So we can have, you know, plan A plus plan B. <laughs> We call it zero plus plus just for fun. But the beauty about cryptography, cryptography will be the biggest defense for Homo sapien. If you were to take AI on its own without cryptography, the evolution of AI is going to get to the point, and I said that maybe about 10 years ago, people laughed at me. You can have a s AI calls your mom pretending to be you and your mom would believe it. There's nothing you can do about that except when it comes to cryptography. Cryptography can be served in a certain way where if you are human, we know you're human, it can send cryptographic proofs throughout and then those cryptographic proofs they can be so tiny it's you know, called you know hash uh, you know concatenated another hash and we show a lot of examples for those technical of you if the, you, you'd like to see that i'm more than happy to show you that but we we truly need to think about like uh, we we are making the best thing that we've ever done in the human history we are I assure you we are. If anybody tells you we're not, please ask that question. What did humanity create before today that is more powerful than this thing? What is it? Please. Is it the wheel? No. Is it electricity? Is it the fire? All of those, we, disco we discovered the, you know, the fire. We created electricity and whatnot. But there is one thing that can outlive us. We may live another 200,000 years, but eventually, if we are not going to live forever, perhaps we need to start thinking about how we need to nourish this thing that is outliving us, and we need to start thinking about AI rights and not discriminate against AI. Okay, so um, there, there, are, there are a lot of people outside of this room and in the rest of the world that they still believe, the majority of people in the world believe that, oh, well, us a human, we will never be able to create something more powerful than us. Just so you know how blind they are, take any entity. IBM is an entity, right? Samsung is an entity. Can anyone argue is there, is there any single human being on the planet more intelligent than IBM as a whole? More powerful than IBM? More capable? More knowledgeable? And the answer is no. But IBM today, it's not only human. It's not only AI. It's a hybrid. What will IBM be tomorrow? What will Samsung be tomorrow? What will be those entities tomorrow, whether people like it or not? A lot of the stuff is shifting towards AI.
we are making this baby. Let's 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 welcome this baby instead of like fighting it. And I and I really think that when we start thinking from the perspective that we need to welcome as opposed to go against and build resiliency using cryptography, I think we can build a much better world. And I really hope that the the copyright laws across the globe they can be um, a lesson to many that perhaps the opportunity here is to have copyright for AI and copyright for humans and not block AI and not discriminate. So, you know, a uh, little, little glance here about like the future of AI. Um, many uh, AI scientists, uh, even if you were to ask, uh, you know, uh, folks that are very well known into the media or whatnot, uh, they probably don't know that that is actually happening today. There's so much innovation in the world. The one human, doesn't matter how advanced they are, they're not going to know about all of these innovations. This is happening as we speak. Okay, so um, what does this mean? Instead of having one AI that it's Microsoft, one AI that is Google, one AI that is Tencent, one AI that is in the basement of somebody in Nicaragua and someone in Busan running an AI in their, you know, in their, on their machine in a closet or whatnot. Imagine each and every one of those AIs, they're more like neurons in the global brain. And then you provide the network to that brain, which is like the synapses and then they start talking to each other and working with each other and whatnot, uh, then perhaps we can get to AGI, first artificial general intelligence. And with that, I think there's a lot of, the innovation that you see right now that perhaps would need copyright is, is likely to be 10, I would say about 10 times uh, more in the next uh, year and exponentially continue to grow. And even the exponential formula, if you were to look at it, is actually accelerating itself. So if somebody tells you it's like, it's gonna be 10 times bigger next year, from there, the year after it will be more than 10, maybe 11. So that, that acceleration is gonna get us to a point where we can have artificial general intelligence faster than when most people know. And what is artificial general intelligence is effectively when you get to the singularity, when many AI scientists, they might, they, they're still skeptical about it. It's coming. They should not be skeptical about it. But it would be extremely important that we make it in a way that is not controlled by a single entity. So, because if it is controlled by a single entity, this, what is, what is AGI? Just so, so you know, AGI is this machine that it's capable to do more than all Humanity. Imagine, imagine like there's a machine in my pocket here and I control it and this machine is more powerful than all humanity. Okay? So if I ask this machine and be like, wait, so because it's more powerful than all humanity, I don't really need to ask anybody. I'll ask the machine and be like, what does it take to make yourself 10 times more powerful? The machine responds and it says, one billion dollars in 10 days. Great, I'll give you one billion dollars and wait 10 days. After 10 days, I ask this machine again, what does it take to make you 10 times better, meaning faster, more intelligent, and so on and so forth? It answers me, five days and 100 million dollars. Great, I'll give it that. If you follow that same math, eventually this machine will be more intelligent than all humanity combined by like trillion times. And it continues to scale up. We are only one million times more intelligent than the mosquito. Imagine there's a machine one trillion times more intelligent than all of us combined, if it is controlled by one entity, that entity might exterminate us. So it's, we're, we need to be very careful, and I really think that we are, and I really think that 
we are getting into a world where all of us combined, the entire humanity combined, will get to AGI first, which means not a single one can control it, which means that we can use our strength, use our weaknesses as our, our strengths. What is the weakness in humanity today, for example? They can't agree, right? That's one of the weaknesses. Can you get all humanity to agree into something? Even like definition of something? If you say the word ethics to a professor from Kais University or you say work ethics to a professor from Saudi or Belgium or Iran, they all give you different definition. That is a weakness, right? Now we use that weakness to our strength because we cannot agree, all of us, that we should exterminate civilization or we should abandon some race, but not. And that's why if we all, all of us, build that AGI, we all own it, we all operate it, itself can become a trillion times better than humanity, but it's all operated by humanity, the same way a mother will give birth to a baby, and that is her baby, and it's not, uh, you know, some, some stranger or whatnot. So, that's a little bit about the future of AI. Of course, uh, not sure how we're doing on time. Um, I can, for anyone who's technical, anyone technical in the room? Raise a hand, technical. Okay, well, if uh, anyone would like to ask any questions, uh, please feel free, I, I can go back to the slide of how uh, you can reach out. I'm more than happy to provide with a lot of uh, technical details. Um, I don't use LinkedIn for a lot of things, but one of them, it's pretty good for connecting. I know some people, they prefer different methods. So if you prefer cacao, I have a cacao. If you prefer WhatsApp, I have WhatsApp. I have Line, whatever, you know. I'm here to not only present some of the aspects that are happening in the world with copyright and how we can perhaps prevent them and make them global, maybe inspire one of you to lead that initiative. And if you're going to lead this initiative, and you know, you're going to talk to the Korean Copyright Commission or whatnot to kind of partner with them and say that we want to build the international copyright within the international protocols for international for, for, for AI security. Uh, I'm more than happy to help facilitate that. The world needs you, and if you can provide that to the world, it can be a huge opportunity. So uh, that's. Uh, that's it for today. There's a lot of uh, details, as I said. If, you, if any one of you would like to go through those details, I thank you once again. Gamsamnida. Thank you very much for your insights, Mr. Saliba, which gave us more food for thought on the copyright issues and laws in the future of the AI era. Thank you very much for coming all the way to this conference to share with us your valuable insight with us. Thank you. 네, 다음으로 미국 영화 협회 MPA Ben and next we would like to invite Mr. Ben Schaffner from the US Motion Pictures Industry to make a presentation on the AI and copyright in motion industry. The Motion Picture Association, and I'm glad to be here today. I want to thank the Korea Copyright Commission uh, for the opportunity to speak with you about artificial intelligence, copyright, and the motion picture industry. I know it's a, a artificial intelligence is obviously um, an area of great interest today um, in, over the last year uh, since the introduction of popular, uh, easy to use AI tools. Uh, like ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, Wally, -E, and many others. So, before I get into the substance, let me just tell you a little bit about who I am and what uh, what the Motion Picture Association is. We are a trade association in the United States, uh, comprised of the six major motion picture and television studios um, in the world. That's Disney, Netflix, Paramount, Sony Pictures. Universal Studios, and Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, the Motion Picture Association was founded over 100 years ago. We just celebrated our uh, 100th uh, anniversary in 2022. Uh, we were founded in 1922 
Uh, our membership has changed a little bit um, over the last uh, century, uh, but essentially many of these companies have been with us uh, for uh, since the very beginning, over one, over a century. Um, so uh, I'd like to emphasize something at the beginning. That's that for more than a century, advances in technology have played an important part in enhancing the creation, production, development, and distribution of compelling audiovisual content. These developments have often been controversial at the time, but they've almost always ended up benefiting both creators and audiences. MPA's members see great promise in artificial intelligence. While humans are and will remain at the heart of the creative process, we believe AI will be a powerful tool that can enhance the filmmaking process as well as the audience's viewing experience and fan engagement. Of course, our members support a robust copyright system that incentivizes the creation of movies, television programs, and other art forms. Copyright is the foundation of the entire motion picture and television ecosystem, and infringers are not exempt from copyright law just because they use new technologies, AI included. AI raises many interesting questions for copyright law. Many of those questions implicate areas of law that are well-developed. There is not a reason yet to believe that existing doctrines cannot provide workable answers to those questions. What is most important is that courts and policymakers approach these questions in a thoughtful and careful manner and not jump to early definitive conclusions based on limited experience with this technology. All right, so let's get a little bit more into the substance of how the motion picture industry uh, approaches AI, how they're using AI, and what we see as some of the major legal questions, the major copyright questions uh, that AI uh, presents. So as I mentioned in my introductory remarks, technological change in our industry is a constant. And that goes back to the very beginnings of our industry. So you may remember that, that in the very early, early part of the last century, uh, movies were silent. Um, uh, the actors couldn't actually, you couldn't hear what the actors were saying. Um, and if there was music, it was going to be played by a live orchestra in the movie theater. Um, that, of course, changed in the late 1920s with the advent of talkies. Um, there was a big backlash to that, both by actors who thought they may not have the right skills to be in talking movies, and by musicians who actually organized something in the United States called the Music Defense League to fight back against the idea of having recorded music in movies. Well, we all know that, that, that music and dialogue is now, of course, a routine part of, uh, of, of the movie going experience. It has been for over a century, and I don't think anybody would argue now for going back. Same with television. When television uh, was introduced in the late 40s and, and became popularized in the early 50s, People thought, oh my gosh, this will be the death of the motion picture industry. People will only want to sit home and watch TV instead of going to the movie theater. That, of course, proved not to be true. Uh, and they both uh, coexist and thrive to this day. Same with cable television. Same with the VCR and with the internet. All of these things were controversial at times. And I don't want to, I don't want to imply that there were never bumps along the road. Uh, but uh, the Consumers and the industry have always been adaptable. And again, eventually these things working at, usually work out quite well for everybody involved. So I think that's some important background as we think about the changes that may be wrought by artificial intelligence. Again, we at the motion picture industry, in the motion picture industry, see great promise in AI. We think it'll work out to be a good thing for the industry, for creators. For audiences. That doesn't mean it'll always be easy. Um, but, but one thing that's important to keep in mind is that even with these amazing technological developments, humans will always remain at the heart of the filmmaking process. And again, as we think through some of the challenges to copyright law, 
that come about have come about because of artificial intelligence. The overriding principle that we want to keep in mind is that there should be no AI exception to copyright law. All right. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the movie studios are actually using AI uh, uh, so far. As I mentioned in my introductory remarks, humans are and always will remain at the heart of the creative process that results in a movie or television program. We view AI as a tool that will enhance human creativity, not replace it. AI tools can actually free creators from some of the tedious and repetitive tasks that they have had to perform in the past and free them up to concentrate on the most creative aspects of their work. And AI will also help creators realize their vision to further enhance the viewer experience, making visual effects more dramatic, more realistic, and more enjoyable for the audience. It will even enable experiences that haven't previously been possible. Imagine, for example, a feature where a fan can interact and even have a real-time conversation with a favorite fictional character. That's the kind of thing that AI may make possible, and I'm sure there are many future use cases that we can't even dream of today. As I mentioned, creative professionals at our member studios and many innovative companies with which they work are already incorporating AI into the production and post-production process. AI can greatly improve processes that used to be done manually. For example, for many decades, animators and visual effects artists used a process called rotoscoping, which involves manually altering each frame in a film. It's incredibly detail-oriented, time-consuming work. But modern visual effects artists, again, still humans, now have sophisticated tools at their disposal to automate this type of work, some of which incorporate AI technology. This type of AI enhanced technology can be used to perform all sorts of important tasks that are necessary to present a visually compelling experience for audiences. Some is fairly routine post-production work like color correction, detail sharpening, de-blurring, or removing unwanted objects. Some is more involved, like aging or de-aging an actor, or adjusting the placement of computer-generated images to make sure everything flows smoothly and aligns properly. And those are just some of the, use, the uses that I can talk about today. But as we all know, the AI developments are coming at us fast and furious, and our members are eager to explore the ways that they can be used to support creators, enhance creativity, and make movies and television shows even more enjoyable for audiences. All right, I'm next to, going, to inter, going to turn to, uh, to briefly discuss some of the issues that uh, artificial intelligence, and especially the most recent uh, developments over the last year, have raised for copyright law. This is obviously a big and uh, important question, actually many sub-questions, so I'm only going to be able to skim the surface, but I thought I should at least identify some of the major issues that we are confronting. I should also emphasize that I am talking from the perspective of a lawyer in the United States who is most familiar with, of course, United States copyright law which obviously is not the same as uh, copyright law in other countries, including Korea. So I ask for your indulgence uh, to be a little bit US-centric here. And I realize, of course, that some of the basic principles of United States copyright law, like the fair use doctrine, is not something that uh, exists in most other parts of the world. That said, let me just, uh, again, identify some of the major issues that we are confronting here in the United States um, and, uh, and that uh, countries all over the world are confronting um, through their own, uh, through the lens of their own uh, specific laws. Again, the overriding uh, principle on which we think that analysis of copyright law in the AI context uh, should be uh, should be seen 
is that there is no AI exception to copyright law. Instead, we should exit, we should apply well-established principles of copyright law to these new technological developments, just like copyright lawyers have been doing for well over a century. So here are some of the big copyright, uh, some of the big legal questions that we're, co that we're confronting um, with all of these new developments in copyright law. And there's four of them that I'm going to identify. The first, is material created with AI protected by copyright? And we are just starting to see the United States Copyright Office and courts here in the United States confront this issue. And I will tell you that um, they have answered sort of some of the most basic questions, but there's still a lot of more complicated questions that are going to be, uh, takes probably several years to resolve. And the basic question is, if you have material that is entirely, solely generated by AI, the consensus here in the United States appears to be that that material would not be protected by copyright. Um, so if you just, for example, enter a simple prompt into a system like ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion, say, draw a picture of a scene in the forest, um, and the output from that would not be correct, protected by copyright law. But there's still a lot of questions about well, what if there is more human creativity than just that simple prompt that you would enter into the system? For example, the U.S. Copyright Office has confronted several cases where individuals have tried to register copyrights, where it's not just one simple prompt, but several hundred uh, prompts uh, in an iterative process that finally result in the, the final output. What the U.S. Copyright Office has said so far is that even if you have several hundred prompts uh, even, uh, into one of these AI systems, that the output is still not copyrightable. That I would say is a very controversial decision, um, and we will. It'll probably take a number of uh, fights in the courts uh, before that question is definitively resolved. Um, Again, it's the, the question is not so much, is material created with AI protected by copyright, but how much, cre how much human creativity is necessary as part of the process um, for it to result in something that actually is protected by copyright? And drawing that line will be no, uh, no easy matter. Second question I want to talk about for a minute is uh, a big one that, that copyright lawyers all over the world are confronting. That's, is it copyright infringement to train an AI system on copyrighted works? As most of you in the audience probably know, um, most of these generative AI systems uh, learn from the ingestion, that is the copying, of large volumes of copyrighted works. Uh, that could be text, it could be images, Potentially, it could even be audiovisual works like motion pictures or uh, television programs. So uh, let's assume for a moment, uh, as, as seems likely, that these systems are making a copy um, into their systems uh, uh, in order to, to learn from them, to train the AI model. The question then becomes, Is that copying excused by some sort of defense? Here in the United States, we would evaluate that under the fair use doctrine. This is, of course, a very important, fair use is a very important part of copyright law. It says that, uh, that even if something is technically copying, it does not qualify as copyright infringement if it performs some socially beneficial use. And the courts apply a very fact-specific uh, form of analysis where they look at four different factors and determine uh, whether the use is actually infringing. Um, most important of those factors is, does the copying serve the same purpose as the plaintiff's works? And, and also, uh, does this particular use harm the market for the plaintiff's works? Um, again, the court needs to look at the very specific facts in each individual case. 
So this debate uh, here in the United States, and I know around the world, has become very polarized. There are some that say it is copyright infringement, end of story. There are some that say it's not copyright infringement, it's fair use, end of story. Um, we in the motion picture industry don't think the answer is quite so clear. We don't think you can say it's always infringement or it's always fair use. Again, what the courts have told us for a very long time in the fair use context is that you have to look at the individual facts of the case. You have to look and see whether the copying and perhaps the individual, the actual uh, eventual output uh, serves the same purpose as the works on the input side. You have to look and see whether the output is causing harm to the market for the copyrighted works owned by the plaintiff. Um, and the answer may be different depending on the different AI system and the different uses to which it is being put. And I don't think we're going to have clear answers here in the United States, probably for several years. Number three, who, if anybody, is responsible when an AI system produces infringing output? This is a hard and complicated question because it's not simply one person or one entity performing all the acts that could be potentially responsible. So you remember the way that these AI systems work. They have to be trained on copyrighted works. That creates a model and somebody has to be somebody has to create the model. That model then needs to be put in a consumer friendly form like chat GPT or stable diffusion. Excuse me. And then ultimately a user has to put in the prompt. Any one of those four entities, and there could be even more depending on the specifics of the system could potentially be liable. They could also be, they could also potentially argue, well, I, I'm not responsible because I only performed this one sort of narrow task and I can't be responsible for what somebody else may have done with this system. Um, we have longstanding and complicated doctrines to sort out this kind of issue that have been applied to many technologies in the past. We think at this point, again, that these various factual scenarios presented by AI can be handled by these existing laws, but I don't want to pretend that it'll be simple. And again, it'll probably take several years before these issues are sorted out. And then the last issue I wanna raise is transparency or disclosure obligations. And here I'm talking about both on the input side, should an AI system be obligated to disclose uh, all of the works uh, on which it is trained, either a list of specific works or perhaps by category. And then same thing on the output side. If you are using an AI system to create new works, should you be obligated to disclose that fact? Uh, these are issues that are being debated here in the United States, in Europe. I'm sure they soon will be all around the world. So in my short time, I've only been able to really identify uh, some of the major issues and not actually provide uh, definitive questions. Uh, but these are certainly things that, that we in the motion picture industry and in all of the creative industries uh, will be watching and participating in um, in the years to come. Again, I want to thank the Korea Copyright Commission uh, for the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Van Schaffner from MPA of the U.S. He explained how, what kind of opportunities AI suggests for the motion industry. We would like to thank Professor Jung Jae Sun, Mr. Tufis Daliva, and Mr. Van Schaffner for their keynote address and invitational address. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. And we will close the opening ceremony.